The central element of the magisterium is the papacy. As Catholics, we believe that Christ personally appointed St. Peter as the head of his church on earth. One of the central scriptural references for this belief is Matthew 16, verses 13 to 19. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Jesus says to Peter, you are no longer Simon, meaning reed, a reed kind of swaying and blowing in the wind, influenced by things around it. He says, you are Peter, in Hebrew, kepha, meaning rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. Now, uh, in a very important cultural point of emphasis, in the ancient world, you literally were your name. It defined who you were. So changing one's name was really giving them a new identity, a new mission. We c really can't overestimate the importance of such a change. Now, we might ask, is such a change unprecedented? Not at all. In the book of Genesis, God changed Abram's name to Abraham, meaning father of many. God was giving him a role in his plan of salvation, to be the father of the covenant, the father of many nations. Similarly, Christ's changing of Simon from a reed blowing in the wind to a solid immovable rock on which Jesus will build his church signifies a God-given role in salvation history. Just as the temples of the Old Testament were built on a great foundation stone, so Jesus built his church on the foundational cornerstone of Peter, Peter's confession of faith, revealed to him by the Father. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus is presented as the new David, the Messiah King born of David's line who will rule over his house forever. In the Davidic kingdom of the Old Testament, the king appointed a cabinet of ministers led by a prime minister who is second only to the king in authority. Jesus appoints Peter, the prime minister over the kingdom of heaven, in the church. Peter's authority as the leader and chief teacher of the church is solidified by Christ in the giving of the keys. In giving Peter keys, he gives Peter power, the power to bind and loose, to open and close on earth, which corresponds to a heavenly opening and closing. In the Gospel of John, Jesus refers to the people of God as the flock, and himself as the Good Shepherd. At the end of the same Gospel, Jesus hands that flock, his flock, over to Peter. Jesus makes Peter the keeper, the shepherd of his flock, the church. Jesus instituted Peter's position not only for him, but also for his successors, the popes. Since the office is meant to endure as long as the kingdom itself, which, as Jesus says at the end of St. Matthew's Gospel, it will last until the end of time, the office of the papacy will last until the end of time as well. Entrusted with the keys that Jesus gives him, Peter and the popes will wield Christ's own royal authority 
to teach, to govern, to rule throughout history until he comes again. And we can trace all of our popes from Benedict XVI all the way back to St. Peter, 265 of them. So the Pope, the successor of St. Peter, and the bishops, the successors of the apostles, get their authority from Jesus Christ. Just as in the Davidic kingdom, the king had a cabinet led by a prime minister, the church, the kingdom of Christ on earth, has a cabinet, the bishops, led by Christ's self-appointed representative, the Pope. Together, they constitute the magisterium of the church. The Catholic Church is the church Christ founded. He founded it under the leadership of the apostles with Peter, the rock, as its head. All the popes back to Peter inherited Christ's mission and call to lead, to shepherd the church he founded, his church, Christ's church, the Catholic Church. All of the Christian churches broke away at one time or another from the Catholic Church. Only the Catholic Church can trace its origin to Jesus Christ himself while he was personally present here on earth. The way that the Church can do this is through the leadership of the popes and the apostles in an, op in, in an unbroken line back to St. Peter himself who received his commission from Jesus Christ. Now there have always been divisions, disputes, and debates over doctrine, over Christ, dating back to the earliest days of the church. But how were these questions always settled? The earliest disciples, like Orthodox Catholics today, said, where Peter is, there is the church. Then and now, Peter has the final decision. This is the heritage of Christ's church. This is where the Catholic Church gets its teaching authority and the Pope gets his infallibility on matters of faith and morals. As we read in the Catechism, in order to preserve the Church in the purity of the faith handed on by the Apostles, Christ, who is the truth, willed to confer on her a share in his own infallibility. By a supernatural sense of faith, the people of God, under the guidance of the Church's living magisterium, unfailingly adheres to this faith. Now some will say the Pope is only a man. We might say, well, Moses was only a man, but the Israelites followed him. If we could go back to the Old Testament times and ask the Israelites, why are you following Moses? Moses is only a man. Moses isn't God. Why are you following him? They would have said, Moses is only a man, but he is a man chosen by God. They would say, we know what God wants to tell us when Moses speaks. God uses the voice of man to speak his word to mankind. God spoke through Moses. He spoke through Abraham, through David and the prophets, right up to St. John the Baptist. They were all men not God. Jesus Christ, who was both fully man and fully God, chose to found his church on earth on the rock of the papacy, which provides the means by which we can be certain that Jesus continues to speak to us, to teach us, to shepherd us, until he comes again in glory.